Thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. On today's show, we have some news to discuss. We have some anniversaries to cover, and it should be a good one. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, Earthlings. Just kidding. Stacey Gatsoulias, host of Locked On Yankees. If you're watching on YouTube, it's right in front of your face. If you're listening, hello, how are you? It is Monday, October 18th, and we will be discussing all of the different changes that the Yankees have made in their coaching staff, but not the main changed that some of us would want it's not official that they're bringing Aaron Boone back but it looks like they're aiming that way we'll see and then we have some anniversaries to talk about because the Yankees used to play deep into October they haven't done that in a couple of years and I miss those days so we're going to look back at some of the fun Yankee wins of the past I have one that I want to talk about that actually happened 23 years ago last night, which that's a frightening thought that it was that long ago, but you might know what it is. Let's just say, all right, two words to give you a clue, grand slam, that should help you. And if you do the math in your head, you'll know what I'm talking about. So we'll do that and more. But first, you can get this podcast in Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, all those good places. You can tell your smart device to play podcast locked on Yankees. You can watch us on YouTube. We're everywhere. So the Yankees made some changes in their coaching staff. Not the change I would want them to make and not the change that a bunch of other people would want them to to make because uh, I just, I think they need to move on from Aaron Boone and I don't understand why they don't do it. I don't, I don't understand why they think changing the rest of the staff is going to help, but not the manager. And, okay, I'll say this. It's not Aaron Boone's fault that a lot of players underperformed this season. I mean, really, the only guys who were pretty consistent most of the year, Stanton was up and down, but he was pretty consistent for the last part of the year. Uh, Stanton and Judge were pretty much it on the hitting side. And, you know, it's not entirely Boone's fault, but as I've said many times, and, you know, this is going to be another... Stacy rants about Sonny Gray the entire offseason sort of situation if the Yankees keep Aaron Boone. I'm just apologizing in advance. If you listened to this podcast when I first started, the winter, <laughs> the winter that they were trying to decide what to do with Sonny Gray was epic. I complained about that a lot. So I'm just warning you now, I'll be complaining about Aaron Boone a lot if they keep him. All signs point to most likely that they're going to keep him, but they got rid of Phil Nevin, poor Phil Nevin, although not poor Phil Nevin. The Yankees got thrown out of the plate, what, 23 times and none bigger than that uh, awful call at Fenway during the wild card game that totally changed the game. And really that was, I know it was not that late in the game, but that was the dagger. That was it. You just knew as soon as judge was thrown out that they weren't winning that game. I don't even know why I watched the rest of the game, but I did. So they fired Phil Nevin, Marcus Timms, and PJ 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 Pelletier. I believe that's how you say his name. Um, he was the assistant hitting coach along with Timms. And uh, as far as I know, they're keeping Matt Blake. They should. The pitching wasn't really a problem, other than the bullpen explosions, but those happen. Um, and other than Garrett Cole, I wouldn't say he turned into a pumpkin. Because I read off a series of tweets last week, or maybe it was the week before when they first got eliminated, that kind of proved that his issues were from his hamstring. And he probably shouldn't have been pitching on it. But what was he going to do? Sit out? That would be way worse, I think. So, yeah, the Yankees are so far keeping Aaron Boone. But there were reports coming out that they were looking for someone to work with Aaron Boone who would be the yin to his yang. It's not yin yang, it's yin yang. There's no G on that first word, people. People keep getting that wrong and it's kind of hilarious, but kind of sad. So anyway, I don't understand 
why they would go that route and not just get a new manager. Is it because the players love him? Possibly. But as I said, on last week's, one of last week's shows, trying to remember which one it was, the players might like him, but it doesn't seem like he motivates them that much. I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but I don't know. I just don't feel like he's just too laid back. He's, he's too laid back. And Joe Girardi was the opposite extreme. Joe Girardi was too rigid. And Aaron Boone is way on the opposite end and way too relaxed to be the team's manager right now. Um, you know, he lucked out that the first few seasons, I wouldn't say he lucked out in 2019. 2019, I still, it's two years later, I still don't know how that team won 103 games with all those guys getting injured and how all the guys that stepped in were just as good as the guys they replaced or better than the guys they replaced. It was the strangest season in that respect. They really should have gone farther than six, the sixth game of the ALCS. Speaking of the ALCS, I have not watched other than seeing clips of it on Twitter. I have not watched a single second of it. I cannot bring myself to do it. I would rather have a meteor hit me. I would rather have a meteor hit Fenway park tonight that game's at 808 it's now 508 so you have three hours to prepare for that it is not fun watching those two teams in the ALCS um it wasn't fun in 2018 (laughs) and you know it wasn't fun watching the Astros and the Rays last year that wasn't fun so yeah the the ALCS is not fun for Yankee fans uh we're being tortured by that and Astros won the first game and then the Red Sox just went ham on Saturday night against the Astros. They had two grand slams in the first two innings and that game was over pretty quickly. So um, yeah, Yankee fans are not having a good time this October. I know I'm not. Yeah. I'm assuming that most of you are not having a a lot of fun. (laughs) watching the playoffs right now if you're watching i know that there are a lot of people who are choosing not to they're watching the nlcs instead of the alcs and i'm going to talk about the nlcs in the next segment just because it's interesting so far but kind of parallels to last year in a way we'll get to that in a second does this sound familiar You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone. You've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. You can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. The best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device is required and your content varies by package. Thanks again for making Logs on Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Lucky for you. So... The sun is shining into my face, which is great. Wonderful. I forgot about the lower angle of the sun in mid to late October. So yeah, this is going to happen. Anyway, the NLCS is interesting. The Braves are up to nothing. Both games were one on walk-offs. Both games were back and forth. And it's similar to last year where everyone was thinking, oh, the Braves are going to upset the Dodgers. And then they didn't. So we'll see how this year plays out i can't predict that series at all all i know is after the game last night max scherzer said that his arm was dead i don't think that's a good thing for the dodgers and this is the thing that scares me i feel like the dodgers as they are have a better chance of beating whoever comes out of the al i don't feel like the braves can but the braves have been proving everyone wrong The Braves have lost pitchers. They lost Acuna. I mean, they've lost major players on their team. And here they are up to nothing on the the Braves, on the Dodgers, heading into Chavez Ravine. So could be different than last year. 
as I said, the Dodgers made quite a comeback on the Braves and kind of humiliated them in a way. And the Braves are just out there proving people wrong. Jock Peterson hitting home runs with pearls on. I love it. I do. I love it. I think it's great. He actually, his at bat before the home run, he hit a, a ball off Scherzer that he timed. He was just off and hit it too soon. And it went pretty far foul. And if he had straightened that out, that would have been a bomb of a home run. And then he hit a bomb of a home run. I think it's called the Chop House at Truist Park. He hit it on the roof of that place. And I think Stanton hit something close to that in the regular season. That is not that easy to do. And Stanton did it oppo. <laughs> I mean, at least Jock Peterson is lefty. So he, you know, but yeah, that was, wow. Um, and it was pretty funny too, because I saw the Dodgers were up for two. And what was that? I was watching something else. I, I kept flipping back and forth. And I was like, oh, the Dodgers are up for two because they were tied 2-2. Two, two. And I turn it back and it's 4-4. And I'm thinking, what the hell happened? And then I looked on Twitter and I saw that it was Austin Riley again. Where the hell did Austin Riley come from? Aside from, uh, is he, did they say he was from Mississippi? I believe they said he was from Mississippi. But aside from coming from Mississippi, where the hell did he come from? Wow. Have yourself a series. And then, you know, Eddie Rosario. I don't think they got him out last night, right? And then he hit the walk-off single on the first pitch he saw from Kenley Jansen. There were questionable pitching decisions that Dave Roberts made, um, according to everyone watching the game. I know that um, the Los Angeles Times kind of bashed him today for some of the stuff that he did yesterday. Um, yeah, I mean, game one was a bullpen game, right? And that's kind of unusual. And Scherzer had started game five of the NLCS when they beat the Giants and then starting game two, not that much of a turnover. And as I said, just a bit ago, he claims that his arm was dead. He said he felt it when he was warming up and that it didn't get better during the game. He was still pitching fine. I mean, really, he only lasted four and a third and he threw 79 pitches during that four and a third. Um, but it wasn't, I mean, if his arm was dead and he was throwing like that, <laughs> You know what I mean? So um, so they're off today. Obviously, it's a travel day. They're going to L.A. They'll be playing game three tomorrow, but it's a pivotal game three. The uh, Dodgers do not want to go down 3-0. Let's not even talk about that because that anniversary is coming up soon, too. <laughs> I don't like talking about that year. And I know that Sully of Locked On MLB is watching this, and he's probably laughing to himself because we will record podcasts about anything and he'll always bring up that year that I don't like to bring up. He brought it up on a podcast that we did where we talked about the movie Xanadu. Any opportunity that he has to piss me off, he does it. But I love you, Sully. So anyway, uh, yeah. So October 18th, um, the Yankees had some good wins on October 18th in years past. We will go through them in the next segment. Um, it's kind of sad that the Yankees aren't playing on this October 18th. Um, you know, be game three of the ALCS and they would not be hosting it, right? Depending on who they, if they were playing, well, I think if they were playing the White Sox, if something weird happened in the White Sox Astros series and say the Yankees made it past the Rays, I believe the Yankees would have, or maybe not, no, right? Chicago had a better record. So they'd be heading back to Yankee Stadium tonight. That's kind of sad. <laughs> oh, well. Um, Yankee players are posting on Instagram. You know, it's the offseason for them. They're having some fun. CeCe Sabathia was in Disney World with his family. I'm kind of jealous. It's the 50th anniversary of Disney World. Did anyone else go to Disney World a lot as, they were, eh, as a child? Because I did. Um, went a lot when I was really young. Um, so I don't remember my first few trips to Disney World because I was two <laughs> and three. I vaguely remember going when I was three. I went just before my brother was born and then we didn't go again until I was 10. And that was from three to 10. I didn't go to Disney World. There was a long time there. And then we went a lot until I was 16. Then we stopped as a family and I didn't get to go again until just before my 32nd birthday. 
and I walked around by myself in Magic Kingdom and I had the best time of my life. I was there for nine hours by myself, had no one to answer to, no one to have to decide what to eat and what to drink. And I saw CeCe Sabathia's pictures and I thought, I want to go to Disney World. <laughs> they still do that, right? When people win the Super Bowl. I'm going to Disney World. I'm not sure if Tom, how many times has Tom Brady been there? Anyway. <laughs> God. Anyway, yeah. Uh, let's talk about. Let's go back to Aaron Boone just for a second. I gotta bring this up again. I real. I don't understand what the Yankees are doing. I don't. Um. Someone explain this to me. Someone with insider information explain this to me. Yes, the Yankees have made the playoffs every year that Aaron Boone was there, but they've gotten worse. Sure, they lost in the division series in 2018, but they lost to a team that was cheating. They made it to the sixth game of the ALCS in 2019, which was nice, but they should have made it to the World Series and won. Then last season, they made it to the fifth game of the division series. They should have won game two, but they had to play like the Rays and ruin it. And that was a, I don't know if that was a Boone thing or if it was a front office thing, but oh, speaking of that, Dave Roberts admitted that it wasn't really his decision to do the bullpen game. It came from above. What do you guys think of that? Let me know what you think of the managers being controlled that much by the front office. I don't like it. I think the front office should, and I'm a stats person. I'm into all that stuff. You know, I used to write for baseball prospectus and, you know, I, I know what WRC plus is. I know what Woba is. I know all that stuff. But I feel like the front office shouldn't be meddling in the day-to-day. -day. That's what the manager is there for. So let me know what you think about that because I'm interested in hearing people's opinions about it because as much as I like stats and as much as I think that, you know, they do actually help with some things, there's too much meddling going on. Speaking of meddling, not really. <laughs> Built Bar. It's the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team, which is pretty cool. And did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors that there's something for everyone? When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're passionate about their favorites, like me. Mine is mint brownie. If you don't know all the other flavors, you have coconut cherry barcia, which is Jason Burke's favorite flavor from Locked On A's. Raspberry mint brownie, Bryce Patrick of Locked On Rangers loves mint brownie as much as I do. Double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate. And if you haven't tried all the flavors, you can get a mixed box where you get two of each of the nine flavors. Not only are Built Bars the best tasting, but they're healthy too. They're low in calories, low in sugar, high in protein, and they just, they taste amazing. So get the mixed box, figure out what you like, and then just get that flavor. Or, you know, maybe you like more than one flavor. I'm one of those people that likes one. Go to built.com and use our promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. I tried it this weekend. It works. The promo code works. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. So let's look back. Why not? Because we have nothing to look at right now with regards to the Yankees. It's so depressing. As much as I was relieved that we were going to have a stressless October for the most part, I do kind of miss the stress, stressful October. Not really, but. Oh, I was going to look at October 18th, 1998, but let's talk about, let's talk about October 17th. I gave you the clue at the beginning of the episode, but you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I said Grand Slam. Do the math in your head. 1998. Yeah, it was uh, amazing. Absolutely just, <laughs> oh my God. I wasn't even in New York. Let's start there. I was in Boston, of all places, watching game one of the 1998 World Series. And it was a bar near Faneuil Hall. That's all I remember. And it was a bar where you walked upstairs. It was on the second floor of a building, but I can't remember much else about it just that the guy i was with kept begging me to stop cheering during the yankees seven run seventh inning because he was afraid i was going to get him killed i did not 
But yeah, Boston Red Sox fans back then, it was great because they hadn't won anything since 1918. And you could throw that in their faces when they, they started chanting Yankees suck, by the way, when the Yankees scored all those runs in that inning, because that's been happening since the dawn of time. But let's just go through that seventh inning for the Yankees in game one against the Padres in 1998, because it was something. Now, Kevin Brown started that game. And he was in that inning until, let's see, Scott Brosh is grounded out. Jorge Posada hit a single. Ricky Lede walked. So Donnie Wall came in to replace Kevin Brown. Chuck Knobloch hit a three-run home run. So that tied it at 5-5, if you recall. Derek Jeter hit a single off Wall. And then Mark Langston, poor Mark Langston, came in. Paul O'Neill hit a fly ball to right field. So that was the second out of the inning. So there's two outs here, okay? Bernie Williams is up. Langston uncorks a wild pitch. Jeter makes it to second. Then they intentionally walk Bernie Williams. And then they walk Chili Davis, which was not intentional, but they walked him. And then Mark Langston strikes out Tina Martinez, but it's not called a strike three. I'll admit it. We can admit that now. But at the time, we were all excited that the ump blew that so spectacularly. And then Tina Martinez hits his grand slam. And you know the shot. You know the shot of the ball heading into the upper deck. And as soon as it lands, that guy's beer goes all over the place. It's kind of burned into your brain. And <laughs> the Yankees go up 9-5. And they would go on to win 9-6. Because um, the Padres scored in the top of the eighth. Actually, they scored off, well, it was Jeff Nelson put the, the guys on base. And then um, there was an E4 when Mo was in the game. And then it didn't matter because the Yankees were winning that game. But that was October 17th, 1998. It was a Saturday night. Saturday night. in. <laughs> as I said, I was in Boston. And this one guy did the typical see someone who looks like me rooting for the Yankees and assumes that I'm rooting for the Yankees because I like Derek Jeter and I think he's cute. And I said to the guy, I said, I have two words for you. And he goes, oh yeah? I said, yeah. I said, Bill Buckner, okay? Because back then in 1998, you could say Bill Buckner to a Boston Red Sox fan and they would just go, ugh. So that's what I did. Anyway, I miss those days. Can we go back to those days? Can we please go back to those days? Because we're getting to the point now where Boston fans are going to be able to chant 2009 at us. And it's just not fun. So October 18th, 1998, game two. Yankees score nine runs again. This time they just started things off right away. Scored three in the first, three in the second, one in the third. Then they scored two in the fifth, and then they were done. And who got the win? El Duque. Of course he did. Andy Ashby got the loss. And let's see. Bernie Williams had a home run. Jorge Posada had a home run. Ricky Lede had a double off Ashby. The Yankees were four for 18 with runners in scoring position. See, even the 1998 Yankees, who won 125 games in total, still had runners in scoring position issues. So it's not just the 2021 Yankees. Good to know. Now, I believe, let's see. They did a uh, yes. Oh, let's go back to the Red Sox. The Yankees won. Game five of the 1999 ALCS on this date in Yankees history. Like they finished the series. Remember they won it in five and the one game that the Yankees lost was that 13, nothing, no 13 to one game. That was just horrifyingly bad in Boston. And yeah, so they won, they won game one, four, three in 10. They won Game two, three, two. And then that 13 1 game was very strange after those close games. Then game four was 9 2 Yankees, and this one was 6 1. And I had tickets for game six. I was not happy. <laughs> In fact, that was the first year I had season tickets, and I missed, I didn't go to any games that season because they either swept the series and I had the game after they swept or 
they won the ga- the series in five. Like they won the ALCS in five. I had tickets for game six. I was one of the only people rooting for Roger Clemens to poop on the mound in game four against the Braves in 99. And of course, that's the one time he doesn't do badly when I want him to. And the Yankees swept and I didn't get to go to a World Series game until 2000. But I went to a good game in 2000. That anniversary is coming up soon, so I can talk about that. Um, Yeah, the Yankees had a lot of fun wins um, in those days, and I miss them so much. I miss watching the Yankees play late games. They won game two against Seattle in 2001 on October 18th, and that was in Seattle. Moose got the win. Freddie Garcia, hey, old friend, Yankee player from the uh, early 2010s. He got the loss. Mo got the save. Now, 2009, I believe they were not playing tonight, right? Right. The Phillies beat the Dodgers (laughs) 11-0 in game three of, I'm assuming that was the ALCS, uh, NLCS. And then let's see the Yankees. Let's look at, oh, that was a good game. 2017, October 18th, the Yankees beat Houston 5-0 in game five. When the Yankees won all the home games and Houston won all their home games, we know why. 2017. That's all I'll say. Anyway, we'll see what happens tonight between (laughs) the Astros and the Red Sox, but I expect shenanigans Total shenanigans from both teams. On tomorrow's show, we'll have more anniversaries to discuss. If there's more Yankee news to discuss, we will. I'm going to start player reviews talking about 2021. I'm going to start that next week. I will start that next Monday. And I'll go through everyone and we'll talk about how they did. If it was bad, if it was good. If it's someone who wasn't around a lot because of injuries, we'll discuss that. And any Yankee news that happens between now and then, obviously I'll cover. But yeah, tomorrow will be another show of me discussing the ALCS I'm not watching (laughs) and uh, going through old Yankee games because there are no current Yankee games. So that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to remind you that you can listen to the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. And you can watch us on YouTube. When you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On MLB. Now you can make your second listen locked on MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present, and it's free and available on all platforms. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate this podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. Enjoy your Monday, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.